Hi everyone! Let's talk about the polysynaptic flexor withdrawal reflex, which can be comprised of both reciprocal inhibition and cross-extensor reflex. You might have experienced something like this. You're just walking along, going about your day, when suddenly you step on something sharp. In this case, a Lego block. You quickly stumble back and maybe hop around a bit in pain. You might have not realized but this is actually a reflex, which means that it doesn't require input from your brain. Let's take a closer look at what happens. Here I have drawn a cross section of the spinal cord in the middle. There is a leg on either side of the spinal cord that corresponds to the previous example. The leg on the right is stepping on the Lego piece, represented by the red rectangle. I have also drawn two pink patches on each leg. These two patches each represent the flexor muscles of that leg, and these two are the extensor muscles of that leg. When you step on a piece of Lego, it stimulates pain-sensing nociceptors on your foot. The signals travel through slow-conducting afferent sensory fibers to your spinal cord. Remember that the cell bodies of sensory neurons are located in the dorsal root ganglion. In the spinal cord, the sensory neuron synapses with the interneurons. One of these interneurons excites an alpha motor neuron going to the flexor muscles in the leg, which causes these muscles to contract. The other interneuron inhibits an alpha motor neuron going to the extensor muscles, which causes them to relax. The simultaneous inhibition of the ipsilateral antagonistic muscles is called reciprocal inhibition. Together, the contracting of flexor muscles and relaxing of extensor muscles causes the leg to withdraw or retract in response to the stimulus. Often, this reflex is paired with the extension of your opposite leg to help maintain balance. In these cases, the sensory neuron has endings that cross the midline and synapse with two other interneurons. This time, however, one interneuron excites the alpha motor neuron going to the extensor muscles, and the other inhibits the neuron going to the flexor muscles. This causes the extensor muscles here to contract and the flexor muscles here to relax which results in the extension of the leg. The excitation of these contralateral extensor muscles is called the crossed extensor reflex. Let's see what this looks like in an animation. The foot on the right steps on the Lego brick, which stimulates nociceptors to fire impulses. These impulses travel up through a slow-conducting afferent sensory neuron and synapses with multiple interneurons in the spinal cord. These interneurons synapse with alpha motor neurons and either excite them, which are shown as orange stars, or inhibit them, shown as blue stars. The inhibition of the ipsilateral extensor muscles is called reciprocal inhibition, and the excitation of contralateral extensor muscles is called crossed extensor reflex. The corresponding relaxation and contraction of the extensor and flexor muscles in the leg causes the leg that experienced the stimulus to withdraw from possible harm, and the opposite leg to extend to compensate for this sudden movement.